Hey, Doug, I'm here to talk about our sponsor today, Mantra Munchies. And I had to finish eating and put them down before I started this because they're so good. You were like out of control on the 200th episode. You were just going after. I mean, you didn't even come up for air every once in a while. You know? <laughs> Doug, there's, did you try them? They're so good. I, I was eating mostly the Goaty OG cookies, the Nice Guy Richer Edition. And look, Doug, you know, I am not a foo-foo like vegan and vegetarian. I mean, you've done the whole 30 and all that stuff. So you've done really healthy healthy stuff for your body. Me, healthy to me is I only eat two pieces of pizza instead of three, right? But it's so good. It, it doesn't matter. I love the fact that I can eat really healthy with Mantra Munchies munchies and it's still tasty. Where were all of these Mantra Munchies snacks and goody things when I was on my Whole30 program or any of the programs for that matter that I've, you know, that I've had these, to go through? I might actually do like a Whole30 program if I, I could eat this kind of stuff. It's just, it's like you're eating cookie dough. I it mean, is. They, they have the cookie dough creations, hempy fudge brownie flavor, chia chocolate coconut clusters, and I loved the Goaty OG cookies. You, I don't even understand how one man could eat quite as many healthy things <laughs> <laughs> as you. They also have that stuff that you like sprinkle on. Uh, what is that one called? The uh, the biomic blends? Oh my gosh. Deliciously what? sweet and creamy. No sugar, organic coconut milk creamer. Oh, so good. So, you know, the next day after we did our 200th episode live, yeah. I actually made a shake. Sometimes I'll make shakes with you know healthy stuff in it and i put the sweet and creamy in yeah and it, it was so good so they have this thing called super saucy also oh yeah saucy. sassy seasoning for soups salads and sauces mm, saucy mm. classy sassy mild and super sassy spicy all you're doing is adding hot water for a deliciously creamy instant tomato soup packed with so many good things strickland i'm starving gluten-free dairy-free organic raw ingredients many vegan offerings it's not everything is vegan but a lot of it is vegan but what's amazing is as soon as i hear all those things i hear gluten-free dairy-free organic raw ingredients i think taste free too right like there's no taste to it and this is totally not that no no it's like it's as tasteless as the uh, paper that my uh, my the actual copy was written on and it's not that way at all it's so no, much it's better so than bad. paper <laughs> Wait, that's not really saying a lot oh but you got the cookie dough thing the create oh god so good so how kids how possibly- like it better than pop tarts they do? Oh my gosh, yes. Pop tarts. They've done studies with thousands of children. No, they really haven't. Done <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't think that. But I guarantee you, my kids liked it better than Pop Tarts. Well, they, they got the leftovers. That is a winning testimonial. If you can get the triplets involved in anything that is health related, that yeah, has 16 year old girls? Yeah, yeah. You better believe it. So, no, it's they're, great. They're I guess the important question is how do I get a hold of any of these mantra munchies? Mantra munchies.com. Or you can go to niceguysonbusiness.com and you can click the link there for mantra munchies. Mm, geez. Or click the buy now button right at mantramunchies.com. I would just go right to them because then it's instant access to this amazing. I'm looking at like the creations they have on their website. So good. All right. Let me get to this. Can I get to this? It is snack food. Like you can do the cookie dough creations. It is great stuff to put into your smoothies. They also have hot mix stuff, which is like kind of like creamer. Basically, you don't put creamer in your coffee. Instead, you put this really healthy hot mix. Good sauces. Stuff. It's so good. Good stuff. Mantra Munchies. You get yours. I'll get mine. Bye now. Hey, I was just thinking, maybe this show we do something different. Maybe it, you know, not suck. The Nice Guys apologize for any inconvenience that this podcast has caused anyone. By the way, is there anyone listening who knows how to fly a plane? Need an education on how to grow your business? The Nice Guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, nice guy community. Welcome back. Welcome back. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. Hey. What's going on, Doug? We are the nice guys, for those of you who have not heard before. I am funkin' awesome. Funkin' awesome. You know, if our listeners are funkin' awesome, they can get a Funkin' Fans t-shirt, can't they? Yeah, they can. If you just go to uh, niceguysonbusiness.com and click on the uh, the link that says, uh, how about checking out our cool vintage tea? Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have a, a link in the show notes over there if they want to. Uh, we'll have it. But it's really cool. Have you seen the design? It's very, very cool. It's on a, a tri-blend shirt. It's all cool and soft and and, and nice. And um, it says, I'm a Funkin' fan of the Nice Guys. And it's a very cool design. So if you head over to niceguysonbusiness.com, just click on the vintage tea link there or just click on the show notes, you'll see a, a photo of it. Very cool shirt. I love it. 
I love it too. That's our Funkin' Fan shirt. And the link that you put into the show notes, Doug, yeah. is, is a Bitly link. I know. I am so excited about this whole Bitly thing. I know that they've been around for a little while. I just had no idea. I just thought it was just a link shortener, mm-hmm. but, but it actually will help you kind of track where your clicks are coming from. Oh, really? Because yeah. I thought it was just a link shortener also. No, it, it's the, you can do a whole analysis and you can, even if it does, on the, on the short side, just on the very, very overview side of things, it will at least tell you how many clicks that you're getting. Okay. So th- I think that's important. You know, if you say, if you give somebody a bit.ly link and you try to, like I'm using it right now on Twitter to try to figure out which are the links that are getting the most action. And I can do that on Twitter through some analysis, but if I go to Bitly, I am able to do it all in one, all in one spot. So um, I think it's just bit.ly. I don't know. I just, I just went and typed Bitly up in my browser, and yeah, it, keeps, it usually comes right up. Yeah, the shortening apps are uh, are pretty cool, and it also, I don't think, I don't know exactly how it works on Twitter because if I use the entire. Uh, URL for the um, for let's say one of our episodes. Mm-hmm. It's the same character count as a Bitly uh, link. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent sure of all the value that Bitly offers, but I think it's a really cool way to do some analysis and analytics of what's going on with your um, you know with where. If you know anything about Bitly and you want to uh, supply me with more information, uh, nice guy community, feel free to reach out to me, Doug at DougSandler.com. Just say uh, Sandler, you're an idiot. This is what Bitly does for us. <laughs> yeah, because the only thing that I find find it useful for is, you know, if you're going to post a link on Twitter and you're trying to save characters. No, I don't think it saves characters, though. Well, it uh, usually does. I mean, but it depends on the link that you're changing from and the changing to. Like, if you've got the nice guys on business.com slash Funkin' Fans t-shirts and you do a bit.ly, it's going to be many fewer characters. You you might not even be able to fit that. I'm going to, I'm going to twist. I'm going to test this out. You just hold on. You just keep talking about the the benefits of bit.ly here. I'm just going to, I'm going to do a tweet. I'm putting in the bit.ly link right now. Mm -hmm. So I started at 140 characters. I put in the bit.ly link. I was down to 117. Okay. So that's uh, set 23 characters, correct? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Nice Guy Community. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to uh, DougSandler.com. Mm-hmm. I'm going to click on, uh, let's just say our latest episode, which was a long title for our, um, uh, it's DougSandler.com forward slash podcast by the nice guys forward slash Sam Morris. So it obviously is much longer than the bit.ly link, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's just put that now into uh, the tweet. It's 117 characters. Just I- for the link. No, no, no. I'm saying it's, no, not just for the link. You still have 117 characters left. So either way, I think that Twitter, the way that they do it is they must have an internal mechanism to automatically shorten. They don't shorten it so that you see it shortened, but they shorten it so your, uh, your user doesn't get messed up with the character count. That is interesting because I've seen things on Twitter where it looks like the tweet is more than 140 characters. I'm like, how the hell do they do that? And that's probably why. There's probably a predetermined number of characters that get put aside for a link. Well, period. I know that I know LinkedIn does it because LinkedIn has their own, their own, um, like URL, uh, like extension. Mm-hmm. I, I, the area that I really think that helps the most is that it, imagine um, we use um, uh, for the for my Doug Sandler uh, free ebooks and some other stuff. I use uh, heck, what the heck is it? Um, uh, lead pages. Okay. I think when somebody sees something that has a URL that includes the word lead pages, they know it's a sales. You know, like if you saw something sure. DougSandler.com forward slash lead pages dot whatever whatever. Would you be hesitant to click on that link any more so than if you saw a Bitly link? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I never I, thought about it. You know, maybe there. Maybe if there is, um, if I see something that says like salesfunnel.com dot <laughs> or something yeah. like that, I'm thinking I'm probably not gonna. I'm not necessarily gonna get involved here because. Hmm. Where I'm sensing this is going, especially if it's something like lead pages, lead pages, very, very good org. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a great solid organization. I mean, I, they, they have nothing to run from. I'm not saying that they should, right. but I'm saying when I see something that says lead pages, that usually means that I'm about to click on something that's going to get me into a sales funnel. If I have a, a bit.ly link, it at least disguises it enough where I'm still very curious about what's on the other side of that link. Interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way, but you could be right. 
Uh, anyway, so that's the only reason I had those two things as agenda conversations today, because uh, because I, I just thought, mm, you know, I would really like to understand how this whole Bitly thing works a little bit better. I'd also like to understand how the whole sales funnel process works a little bit better. It's It's so unusual what marketing has become, because... You know, I have this program, and we've talked about this a couple of times on the show. If you're just tuning in for the first time to the Nice Guy community, um, one of the areas that I have an emphasis on is in, in my online training. And the online training that I have sold, it is all about, it has nothing to do with the content of the training and all to do with how you get people to get to the content of the training. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. People just don't value the training for the sake of the training. But if you get them to believe in the marketing that leads you to the training, it's all about mar- it's all about the marketing. I I would I would say yeah, it's a great program or yeah, it's a crappy program if I had enough feedback from people once they got into it to help me understand the value of the training itself. What I'm finding is what is most effective or least effective is a good or a bad marketing approach to get people into the content. Well, it's tough because sales funnel is not a physical thing. It's a, it's a concept. And obviously the idea of a sales funnel is you start with a large group of people and you funnel them down to the customers that are actually going to purchase your product. And you got to figure out the best direction to send them in to get the most paying customers. So, and, uh, wait and a minute, so there are lots before, of different ways to do yeah, that. But before you go, but before you go on, I, I'm going to dispute how, what you're defining as a sales funnel. It's not a large group of people that goes down to a small. Yeah. I mean, that is true, but it is the tactic that you use. It's the sales funnel is not the fact that you go from a large to a small group. It's the, fa- it's, it's the item. It's the, it's the, um, it's the thing that you're using to get them to go from large to small. And depending on what that vehicle is that you're using uh, and that tactic that you're using, whether it's a, a, a cool looking like graphic or whether it's an infographic or whether it's actually a letter that brings people through that funnel. What to me is confusing is it's nothing about the content and all about the marketing of the content. You know, we've talked before in the past a lot about there are no unique products out there anymore, right? Okay. Yeah. And you could argue that or not, but let's say hypothetically that there are no unique products out there anymore. Given that premise, then you're right. It's all about marketing. Like, Doug, you could say that your training program is unique and special and amazing. Okay, well, for who? Let's do a little analysis of yours, right? Your training is technically, what is it? Sales training, right? It's about customer service. And sales right? and service training. Okay, exactly. so let's call it sales and service training. Now, who do you think specifically this is good for? Like if you take all sales organizations, who is it specifically good for? I would say it's good for sales departments within large, large organizations, or it's good for the entrepreneur if they are, if they have any level of sales or service in their organization. Okay. So in other words, almost everybody basically is your audience is what you're saying. In other words, you have not narrowed yours down at all with that yeah, description, I hate which that. by the way, yeah. Yeah, I that's agree. Not good. That's not good though. I should, I well, should th- narrow it down. And, and that's the hard part is that you don't have a specific audience. You have a very general audience. And so to that audience, your product is extremely similar to a hundred or probably a thousand other products right, out there, right? Right, right? So the only way to differentiate yourself is either figure out who your specific audience is. In other words, instead of marketing to a uh, hundred thousand people, you're going to market to a thousand or a hundred. And then the, the other option is get better marketing, like figure out how or you, to make them think or you, that your product is better or more special or more different. Or you take the Joe Polizzi approach and Joe runs a company called Content Inc. Uh, or Content Marketing Inc., something like that. And he, what he says to do is you develop your market or you develop your network you get them to fall in love with you through communication, through relationship building, through whatever source that you're doing, like, you know, the, our community, the, mm-hmm. the the solid people in our community. Then you just ask them, what is it that you want? What are you demanding from me? Right. You know, that's that's really a great way to do it. And I did it the bass backwards way. I did it the way when I first got started in this business, I did it in the way that I was so used to it, which was 
I have this great idea. I'm going to take this idea. I'm going to create a product. And then I'm going to find my market to sell this product to. And that's just the wrong approach to take. Well, and the reason that that doesn't work anymore is because the world is so small it, with the internet. Um, let's say 20 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe before the internet was bigger, before the internet was around at all, right? If you had this product, right? And let's say you are marketing it to companies. You go to Marriott Corporation or you go to Target or you go to Kmart because Kmart yeah. needs a lot of help with customer service, right? You go directly to them. Well, they may only have five other people, five other products that they are aware of that do the same thing. Now, in that particular case, you've got a much better, if they're looking at five different products and they think yours is at least as good as everybody else's, hey, you got to. 20% chance of, of landing right, that right, sale, right. right? Well, now there are a hundred other products that look like pretty much what your product is. And so that's why you have to have relationship marketing and you have to get people to know you and like you because however unique you think your thing is, as soon as you go onto the internet, you realize, no, there yeah. are a hundred other people that have the same fucking thing. Yeah, it's a it's a very challenging um, it's a very challenging approach. It's almost like any type of online sales. You, I don't understand. You have to have a you have to have a master's degree, or I, you just have to have this this unlimited thought process that you can just go in any direction. I I don't I I think very linearly line, linearly 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 linearly. Yeah. <laughs> you think in a straight line. Yeah, I think in a straight line and I can't, every time I get pulled into different, you know, the show obviously is a, we go in a million different tangents. That's why I love this show so much because I can go in so many different directions. You know, if, if you were to say to like nice guy community, what is it that you would like Strickland and I to do for you? Right. And, and, you know, we get 15 to 1800 downloads of every episode, but every time we ask that question, we hear crickets. Right. Right. Very so challenging. why is that? Like, what are we doing wrong? Why? You know, we do have absolutely, you know, a, a dozen or so people that are very active and we love you guys. But, you know, out of 1500 downloads, that's a pretty small percentage. Right. I, so we just need to hear some little something. What can we do? And we've tried a lot of different things. We've tried bribery and giving stuff away and offering for people to get on the show. And we and we'll you can record an intro for us and we get dribs and drabs. Yeah, you know who you know really the people that contact us the most, the ones that want to come on the show. They're not fans before they uh before they come on the show and then they here's an idea, Strick. Mm -hmm. Everybody that listens to the show, um let's get them on the show. Okay. <laughs> no, I'd be totally down, but we've offered that too. We said, "Hey, let's say you got a business and well, first of all, we said record an intro, right? Ask us a question and we'll actually play that recording on the show." That's true. That's true. We've and, done that. And we've said, "Hey, if you have a business, in fact, we're going to be talking to sweetjumpsuits.com sometime in the next couple of weeks. We've said, "If you have a business that's struggling, Come on the show. We'll interview you live. No, wait, hold on. No, not sweet. Sweet jumpsuits is not struggling. Just so you know that Strickland didn't mean that they were struggling. He said if you, he didn't mean to compare sweet. You know what I'm saying? No, actually, you know, I, I totally said that wrong. If if you have a company that is that is struggling with something. Like, in other words, struggling with how can I get more customers? How can I get more business? How do I do social media? If there's some, you know, absolutely. I certainly didn't mean to yeah. say it like that. I, I just make it short. Sweet Jumps is viable business, extremely liquid, doing great. Actually, they're doing so good. The government regularly pays them visits. <laughs> <laughs> News to me, but we, we want to help your business. And, and especially if your business is doing well, but there's some specific aspect that you're struggling with, we would love to bring you on and, and give hey, well, you advice live maybe, on the show, but maybe, nobody's taking us up on it. No, maybe they think we suck. <laughs> well, they're listening. If they thought we'd sucked, I would hope they would unsubscribe. No, right? maybe they like us for the entertainment value. Oh, so maybe we shouldn't talk business at all. We should just I don't, shit. No, but then when we don't talk business, people yell at us that we don't talk enough business. Uh, no. You know, you can't please everybody here. <laughs> just don't you know, if you guys would just give us some feedback, we would love to hear what you want and what you don't want. I think first they start by coming to the mastermind group. Then we figure out what it is exactly. We've only that, got eight uh, slots in the mastermind group, though. They better jump in quick on that. Are you going to sing uh, in karaoke when we do that? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. In fact, I'll do, in fact, if you guys really want some entertainment, I will do, what the heck did we call it? Like jukebox karaoke or, or potluck karaoke or something? What is that? Basically, whoever wants to put a karaoke song in for me, yeah. right? 
any song you oh, want. No. You don't even have to ask me or tell me what it's going to be ahead of time. I will go up and do it. Wow, that is pretty ballsy. Mm-hmm. I I would not ever do that. I got like I got like maybe two, maybe three go to songs. I'm I'm good with um, "Devil Went Down to Georgia" by the Charlie Daniels Band. My band played that this past weekend. Really? Yes, we had a specific request for it. It was really good. That's interesting. And I also do uh, "Rapper's Delight." <laughs> I don't even need the words for that. For some reason, I know all the words, which is crazy. Um, my wife does uh, uh, "Bust a Move." Okay, uh, she's good with that. She's any good rap, any rap song. She actually is very good with rap. She's the whitest rapper I've ever seen. Though. <laughs> hey, do you remember when we were growing up? Um, you remember Evil Knievel? Oh, I loved Evil Knievel. I was looking at, I don't know how I came across it, but I was looking at, oh, I know why. It was a post on the Brian, yeah, yeah, Brian Carson. community. Thank you, Brian. Brian put up a, uh, a, uh, a post of, um, I guess it was a guy that was like taking over for whatever, uh, you know, replacing the footsteps or filling in the footsteps for Evil Knievel. I forget the guy's name. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so it got me on this whole other tangent. I was, uh, I was looking up on YouTube all of like the Evil Knievel stunts. Man, that guy fucked his body up so bad. Yeah, he was I mean, he would he would just I don't even know what how he ever got back on that bike again. It's crazy. The the guy that went did it was actually the Snake River Canyon jump. That yeah, that's the one I was Evil watching. Evil Knievel yeah. failed yeah. at. This guy went and did. It was actually uh, at Daru. Oh wow, I can't even say the name. Daru Olanigan. Hang on, I'm going to look him up right now. He's that's the listener that posted it. Daru Olanigan. Yeah, Daru. I know Daru. Like uh, UK, you know? Him? I, I mean, I don't know him personally. I know you him know from. Who he is? The, yeah, for, I know. I know of him from. Oh, the, no, he he's lives very, in New York. Nice I was guy, thinking Daru. with like O O O'Loughlin. I just said that wrong, right? Daru O'Loughlin. I was just thinking with O'Loughlin, maybe just he's like Daru. Irish. <laughs> I'm just probably, through. Probably anyway, is. he was the one that posted it. It's a great link, and you can go to uh, niceshortcut.com if you're not already a member of the Nice Guy community. But it was a stuntman who met Evil Knievel when he was a kid and basically said, hey, I want to do this Snake River Canyon jump. He did it with exactly the same rocket design that Evil Knievel used, and he actually made it work. He went and did it. It's cool. Oh my gosh. The whole thing. I just remember, I can remember being, I think Evil Knievel was around in like the 70s. That was like his yep. heyday for for his things. Yep. He used to jump like Greyhound buses, oh, yeah. and he used to jump through like over state, not over stadiums, but in stadiums, and it was just so many crazy stunts. The guy just took like it's stunting and and marketing to a whole different level. He was like um, he was kind of like the the um, a little bit like Muhammad Ali of of the stunt world, you know. Just Muhammad Ali was like a marketing genius. You know, yeah. the guy was a great boxer, but he was also just a great like showman, wasn't he? Oh, no doubt. I mean, it's and you know what? It was all about the marketing, right? It's all it's all about that. And so anyway, I was just thinking about um, uh, uh, Evil Knievel. If you don't know who Evil Knievel is, just YouTube Evil, E-V-E-L, Knievel. I have no idea. How to, uh, K-N-I-E-V-E-L. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, all good. All good stuff. I don't even remember why we got on to, uh, to Evil Knievel. That was actually on your list. I know it was on my list. I don't remember why I even put it on my list, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you remember um, the? Uh, I was a, a part of it. I think it was to talk about marketing and like mar- marketing blunders and like successful rebrandings. The whole uh, process, Coke going through this, the uh, the new Coke going through old, you know, new Coke, old Coke thing. Yeah, you're totally dating yourself again because it was like 20 years ago now. But yeah, mm-hmm. like why did they do that? Because they felt like they were losing market share. Now, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose on that. You know, you never know. They they had no idea it was going to be such a huge flop. Uh, yeah, they must have just, I don't even, like, what was the market, like the survey, like the research? Because they had to do some R&D before they actually did that, right? I'm assuming well, let's, they. Let's think about it, right? You got your Coca-Cola and you've been the big guy for however many years. Now, Pepsi is, at the time, they're they're growing and they're doing more advertising and they're taking a big chunk of your market share, right? Yeah, and then you yeah. got Sprite and you got all these other soft drink companies that are, that are trying to come in. Yeah, the soft drink I'm market Coca-Cola. was completely blowing up. I mean, everybody was getting into the soft drink business in that time too. Right. So I'm Coca-Cola and I'm thinking to myself, I've got, what am I selling? I'm selling this thing that hasn't changed in a hundred (laughs) years, right? right? Uh I mean, when you think about it on the surface of it like that, it's like, well, shit. Yeah. I mean, really, if we don't 
progress. If we don't change, we're going to yeah. die, right? Yeah. Like, who moved my cheese? Well, yeah, but they need to change not their product, their marketing. <laughs> you know, they just need to change their image. They well, don't have and to that's change they, their product. That's ultimately what they realized. Because when they came out, and by the way, for those of you who are too young to remember, not old fucks like Doug and I, um, <laughs> probably 20 years ago, I had to look this up now and find out when it was, because I don't remember. It was, might be more than 20 years ago now. I don't know. Um, Coke said, hey, we're coming out with a new Coke. And, and the plan at the time was, they were going to get rid of old Coke, right? But there was a huge backlash before new Coke even came out. They were like, we like Coke, don't change it. So then they said, hey, we'll do both side by side. You can have new Coke or you can have classic Coke, right? Well, new Coke was was sweeter and, um, you know, and, and it was just different recipe. And so it flopped totally. I mean, everybody 19, hated 1985. it. 1985. I'm just looking at it now. 1985. 85, 95, 05. That was 30 years ago. So we're totally Jeez. fucking dating ourselves. Yeah. But anyway, it is a very interesting thing because as a marketing research, it, it flopped. And on the surface of it, you'd think this product, right? You look at companies like IBM, we've talked about many times before, they used to make cash registers, right? They're only around now because they continue to change, right? Well, it's kind of like Western Union and American Express. Western Union was in the telegram business. If they were still in the telegram business, they'd be totally fucked. So they went into the money <laughs> 